Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about all of the books that I ended up reading in the later half of August. So this is my August wrap up, but we're only going to be talking about the books that I read in the later half, so the second half of August. If you want to know all the books that I read in the beginning of the month, I'll link my mid-month wrap up in the description down below for you if you haven't watched it yet. I have 15 books to talk about today, so let's get started. I read a few like very short story, like 5 to 14 page novellas for series that I love. So I found out that there was this novella called Royally Marooned by Emma Chase, which is book number 1.5 in her Royally series. I'm absolutely obsessed with the Royally series by Emma Chase, so I have to read anything Thing from that series even this literal six page novella okay <laughs> this is just a very short novella about olivia and nicholas from book one when, when they're on their honeymoon and that's like it <laughs> so i give four stars because i liked it um but it was nothing groundbreaking <laughs> and you can also find this on emma chase's website if you're interested in reading it the koi master by amanda milo was my next read and i actually read this book for my five star prediction vlog at the end of the year i will come out with a video with i think 11 books that i talked about at the beginning of the year that i thought i would give five stars to and this is one of those books and i will be going in depth on what i thought about this book in that video so i'm not going to talk about it in here but this is an alien romance that takes place on this planet um where they're kind of trying to build a settlement and grouping oh my gosh sorry for the sun if it just went away i'm trying natural lighting for the first time in forever so um anyway we have uh this settlement being built and our hero here bash is the quarry master or in charge of all of the people building this settlement and he's very grumpy he's a grump grumpy grumpy alien he hates humans also he utterly hates them because all they want to do is take breaks and they can't work as long as him and he's very frustrated until a new woman our heroine in here gets put on the planet to make this settlement and um uh, he is utterly intrigued by her she works so hard and so fast doesn't complain at all and she also doesn't have part of her arm. She's an amputee. And I just love this heroine. She is so funny. Their banter in here is amazing. And all she wants is this alien to kidnap her and take her and like claim her as his. And so she's been waiting for so long for this to happen. If you want to know my thoughts on this, it's going to be in that vlog that will come out at the end of the year. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> Another very short novella, a part of a series is After Age Eve Brown. Um, it's a little bonus story. This was a really cute novella, only a handful of pages that takes place during the few minutes before Eve's wedding. So we don't get the actual wedding scene. We just get like what happens between the two before the wedding. It was really cute. I gave it five stars. I freaking, I love, I love Eve and Jacob. Okay, I love them. Another book I can't really talk about all that much in this video, and I'm sorry, is When He Was Wicked by Julia Quinn, the sixth book in the Bridgerton series. This is because I'm coming out with the Bridgerton vlog later in the year. I only have one more book to read in this series, so it'll come out soon. <laughs> but this one is about Francesca and I believe Michael. Yes, Michael. And it is their romance. Uh, in this book, Francesca becomes a widow and Michael was her husband's cousin who ends up inheriting his title. There are some trigger warnings in here. I feel like this is the darkest, mo most emotional book out of all of the series so far. Big trigger warning for miscarriage right at the beginning. Um, and the grief that comes along with that and the grief that comes along with losing a husband, obviously. Michael is trying so hard to fight his feelings for Francesca because that is his cousin's like wife. Like that is his cousin's wife and he feels horrible that he is so into her. <laughs> Francesca has to come to terms within this book that she can love again. Like it's okay to love again. I really enjoy that part, but if you want to know more of my in-depth thoughts, that video will be coming out later. I'm sorry, I'm being like a little tease right now, not telling you what I think about these books, but it'll be good in the long run when those vlogs come out. <laughs> okay, one that I can actually talk about is Girls Weekend by C.M. Nas Nas Nascosta? Nascosta. I can never say <laughs> this last name correctly. I'm so sorry. Um, but this is a orc monster romance that was just so fun. I feel like this falls into the category uh, of video that I really want to make called uh, Cute But Hot because this was cute, but it was also hot. <laughs> you have basically three girl friends from work go on this little getaway trip for the weekend to this orc resort, kind of like a nudist orc resort, um, to go have some fun with each other and with some orcs. I think each of the women in this friend group also has a, is a monster of some sort too, like not a monster, like a mythical creature. So I think one's an elf, 
um, I don't remember any other ones, but I think two of them are elves or one of them is half elf, um, but none of them are human is what I'm trying to say. And so each of the girls kind of like hooks up with or gets with an orc and it was so fun. I loved it. I need to read book two because this isn't, this like ends in a happy for now situation um, with each of the girlfriends. So we need to read the next book to see what happens. For tropes in here, you have cute but hot, it's monster romance and involves orcs, obviously. I gave this book four out of five stars. I then read The Creenar Code by Emma Castle. I love Emma Castle's books. And I saw this one on any play and it was an alien romance. And I was like, sold. Let me pick this bitch up. Let's do it. So this one's about Harper and Seth. Harper is a human woman who lives on Earth. And um, Earth at this point has been invaded by the Kreenar aliens, okay? And they've kind of like taken over Earth, but let humans still live there. So Seth just so happens to be one of the aliens and he's going undercover pretending to be a human because like their, their species almost looks like human, but they can like disguise themselves to look like actual humans. Um, so he goes undercover to this bar um, because he thinks that there's like a resistance movement against the aliens going on at this bar, like behind the scenes. And there he ends up meeting Harper, who is the sister to the bar owners. And they end up really connecting and getting along and having some fun together. But then when he finally reveals his true identity, she may or may not be pissed, obviously. <laughs> I really enjoyed the plot and the world when it comes to the Kreenar people. I think there are more books set in this in this universe, in this series, but not by the same authors. Like it's kind of like a joint author kind of series deal. This was really fun to read. However, it was a little too insta-lovey for me. So that's why I gave it a 3.5 out of five stars. For this one, you have Alien Romance, Dyslexia Rep, and Hidden Identity. The, dis the dyslexia part in here is interesting to me, not interesting, but something that I don't know if I can fully recommend to people because there's this discussion going around or has been for a while um, about, disability when it comes to magical healing like someone healing their disability and that not being good representation in a book um however i do feel like the dyslexia rep that was there before the whole healing part was great i really loved that however i don't feel like i could fully recommend this as a fully dyslexia book because because she uses their technology to heal herself of her dyslexia and so it's just like hard for me to recommend something like that, but also like her disability was really, really, really inhibiting the way that she wanted to live. So it's just, it's just hard for me to talk about. I also don't have dyslexia, so I can't speak on that. But like, if I think about it with my disability, I'm like, would one day I want to be healed, you know, or like healed or like have it go away? I don't know. Like it definitely would make my life better because of all the things that I've lost from having my disability. So it's just hard. It's like a, it, it's hard for me to wrap my head around and I don't feel like talking about it anymore. So we're going to leave it at that. But I just want to mention that is there if you are not wanting to read something like that. One book with amazing disability and chronic illness rep was Love Flushed by Evie Mitchell. I loved this one. This is actually a second chance romance between Link, Lincoln, Lincoln is his name, but people call him Link <laughs> and Annie. They were high school sweethearts. They were together in high school, but for whatever reason, they ended on horrible terms and Annie cannot stand Link. Like he broke her heart. We don't know why you figure it out when you read the book, but he utterly broke her heart and she wants nothing to do with him. Annie is also an entrepreneur. She has made and started a business for toilet paper because uh, she has Crohn's disease and sometimes toilet paper can hurt your booty. And so she's making toilet paper that's good for people like her, her who has to use the bathroom quite often, which love it, love to see that. Link is actually part of, a part owner of this paper factory, I believe. And they're about to go under until they like find a company or a products that they can make and they haven't been able to find anything until Annie is trying to find a factory to make her stuff. So they have to team up together to work together in this factory, in this business, even though Annie does not want that. Um, so they're forced to be in this situation together and finally confront their feelings as to why they aren't together anymore and all that jazz. I loved the discussion of chronic illnesses in here. Oh my gosh, I loved it. It was very relatable to me. I really related to Annie in a lot of ways. She was also a resilient boss lady and I love 
love seeing that. I also really enjoyed reading about Link and his relationship with his brother. I really hope his brother gets his own book because that would be fun. But overall, I thought this was a very enjoyable romance. Um, this is gonna get a four out of five stars for me. It just wasn't my favorite thing in the world when it comes to the romance between the two. I feel like everything outside of the romance was absolutely fantastic, but the romance itself just wasn't necessarily my favorite. For tropes in here, you have chronic illness wrap, disability wrap, and it is a second chance romance. I read another book for my five star prediction vlog. I read The Fake King's Dream by Jamie Schlosser the second book in the Between Dawn and, Dawn and Dusk series. This is a fantasy romance series where these fae princes are cursed with uh, by these evil witches to not be able to see until they find their mate in life. So our hero in this book, Damon, he is a dream walker. Like that's his powers. He's prince of like the dream realm or something. And he ends up finding his mate in a dream. She's a human and she's in a coma and he's gotta go find her. Um, that's all I'm gonna leave you with. And um, I talk about this book in my five-star prediction blog that will come out later. I decided to pick up a Cassie Mint novella. I feel like I have to pick one up every now and then just for fun. Okay, I picked up Cold Wood, which is one of her winter warmer novellas. You don't have to read any of her books in order in series. They do not connect at all. I feel like she just picks like a theme to go with her books. So these are all like winter related books. So this is a novella inspired by The Little Red Riding Hood, obviously you can kind of tell by the title. Ruby our heroine is walking home one day to her grandmother's house and she gets cornered by a bunch of wolves that are about to eat her, about to attack her. And this big recluse barbarian man comes and rescues her and shoes the wolves away. His name is Blaze and Ruby is very thankful for him. So she decides to share, show her her gratitude towards him um, by like baking him some snacks and treats and just wanting his company. And he is like, why are you here? <laughs> like, wh why are you, why are you around me? Everyone hates me. Um, He's a big scarred hero. So he thinks that no one wants to be around him, but she's like, no. I I actually like you. I want to be with you. <laughs> I really enjoyed this retelling. It's one of my favorite Red Riding Hood retellings for sure. It was just hot and fun and also pretty sweet, really. For tropes in here, you have height difference. It's on Kindle Unlimited. It's a novella. The hero claims a woman as mine. That's like a trope of mine. You have a reclusive hero, a scarred character, and it is definitely a winter read. I gave this book a four to five stars. I then read Bridgerton book number seven. It's in his kiss. This is Hyacinth and Gareth. Is that who it is? Gareth? Anyway, this is like the friends to lovers book in the Bridgerton series. Hyacinth and Gareth are friends um, because of Lady Danbury. Um, Hyacinth is kind of like Lady Danbury's companion and Gareth is Lady Danbury's grandson. Um, they become friends. I believe these two have to like be in close proximity for a while and I think pretend to be like interested in each other. Anyway, the banter in here was great, okay? I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> and I do love Hyacinth also, I just wanna say, I really love Hyacinth as a character. But if you wanna know my overall thoughts, that vlog will come out later. <laughs> Next is a dud. I read Guarding His Obsession by Alexa Riley. I've never read an Alexa Riley and I don't think I will be reading anymore. <laughs> honestly. Um, I just picked this up because it was a short two hour novella on any play and I was like, why not? I've never tried an Alexa Riley. This is like a novella where the heroine's sister is scared for her safety so she hires her a bodyguard and the moment she sees her bodyguard she's like, I want you. Let's be together forever. And I'm like, girl, no. <laughs> um, that's just not my vibe. No. Um, Insta love in that sense is over the top because he's like full on for it. He's like, yes, let's be together forever. Let's do it. Like, you don't even know each other's names. You don't know each other's last name. Like, chill for a second, please. <laughs> this was a no for me. Gave it two stars. I'm trying to read all of Talia Hibbert's backlist. I am so close. I have, I think like five books or less to read, but one that I just had to pick up is the next book in her Just For Him series. This is Undone by the Ex-Con. This is the romance between Lizzie and Isaac. Lizzie has been recently diagnosed with type one diabetes. If you're wanting a good rep with diabetes, I feel like this would be perfect for you to read. The diabetes discussion in here, I think was fantastic. But again, I don't have diabetes. So please let me know if you've read this, what you you think about it if you have diabetes please anyway she gets diagnosed and it completely changes her life she was a ballerina and she's having to leave her job and her dream in life um because of her disability now and it's kind of like made a domino effect for how she's gonna live for the rest of her life that's something i related to was so hard with this book i am not able to do the job that i wanted to do 
by being in college anymore um in life and i just really 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 related to lizzie so much because of that because of our disabilities and illnesses like man girl i felt you talia hibbert just does an amazing job with disability and chronic illness discussion in her books because she is sick and disabled herself and so it just she does it so freaking well like so well you can always trust talia hibbert with stuff like that so she decides to start teaching dance instead um she ends up teaching dance to this uh little group of girls, these three sisters in their house that are very rich, and they end up bringing her along on a family vacation. However, um, the dad of said family is actually blackmailing the heroine, Lizzie. He has some compromising photos of one of her family members, and she doesn't want them to get out, so she has to do this task that he asked of her, which is to seduce his, like, writing partner and um, get some juicy details from him. Um, his name is Isaac and he's actually an ex-con and he's written about his experience with books being in jail and stuff like that. Um, anyway, so she is forced to kind of like seduce this man. She doesn't want to do it because she, at the beginning, there's kind of like an enemies to lovers bantering relationship, but then she slowly starts to get to know Isaac and he, she's like, oh my gosh, this man is amazing. And I feel horrible that I have to do this. She slowly starts to realize that she cares for him. And he's, he's like fallen hard for this woman. I really enjoyed this one. <laughs> However, it did lag, I feel like in a few places. Uh, this is one of Talia Hibbert's like first published books. Um, so she's definitely grown in her writing, but the characters made up for the lagging parts for sure. I love, I love how Talia Hibbert writes her characters. For tropes in here, you have an author writer. The hero is an author. Um, chronic illness rep, we have diabetes. Uh, we have a dancer, it's hate to love at the beginning at least. I'm making a new trope tag called in love with a criminal because He's an ex-con. There's disability rep and it is involving like sports because I do believe that like ballet dancing and dancing in itself is a sport. Do you know what people's bodies have to go through to be like a professional dancer? Like it is, it is hard work. So this is definitely a sports romance. I gave this book a four to five stars. My last books that I'm gonna talk about kind of like as a group, there are three books. There are the three books in the Tombstone University mini series by K.L. Mann. So I found these just on a whim on Amazon. I found the first one and then I figured out there were three more in the series and I was like, why not just read all of them? So let's do it. Um, they are short monster paranormally rom romance novellas. Um, so the first one is Dare or Death. This was a demon novella. Our heroine Ellie is a human woman and she goes to a college party. She's kind of like the shy, quiet, introverted girl who's going to this party. And they end up summoning a demon in a game called Dare or Death. Basically, these, <laughs> these college people have summoned a demon and he poses them with a dare. And if they cannot do the dare, he kills them. <laughs> Um, what she doesn't expect is for when the, like, demon appears that she's dying to, like, be with him romantically. And there also might be another demon, and the demon men are together, and they want her to join them. Um, so this is an MMF, MMF, yes, MMF monster romance. This was just fun and an enjoyable, like, how long is this? Like, 20, 40 page novella to just like read for a short period of time to escape into. Um, for trigger warnings, you have blood slash knife play um, and fire slash candle axe play. Tropes, you have demons. It's a Halloween. It takes place on Halloween. Um, it's on Kindle Unlimited. It's LGBTQ+. Um, there's monsters and it is paranormal. I give this one 3.5 out of 5 stars. The second one in that series is Mary or Mortem. Um, I think each of these books like take place around like a holiday. So this one takes place around Christmas time. This is a short and hot FF monster novella. So Jamie is a human woman who's the best friend to the heroine of book one that I talked about. And her friend has like disappeared and she's trying to find her. And so she goes to Gretchen who's like the girl who first summoned the demon from book one. And she's like, hey, I know you know where my friend is. We need to go find her. And so she finds out Gretchen is a succubus. That's what it is. She's a succubus. And she's like, okay, I'll make a deal with you. I'll go like bring you to your friend and like show you where she is if you agree to be mine all day on Christmas to do anything I want with. Jamie the heroine agrees to do this and that's what that's what they do and then they realize that they actually want to be together more than just this one night. It's very hot. They're very 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 short novellas. Keep that in mind. Trigger warning you have murder, choking, um, piercings like on page like someone gets pierced on like the heroine gets pierced on page. It takes place during Christmas. It's not Kindle Limited. It's sapphic. It deals with monsters and 
there's piercings involved. I give this one four out of five stars. And the last book in this series that I would love to mention really fast is Bask or Burn. This wasn't my favorite one in the series, um, but it was still enjoyable. This is a MMM -M short monster novella. So the hero, like magical hero creature in here, he's a warlock who can also, I think, breathe fire, which is cool. This also all takes place in like this like university where humans and monsters go to, but not all humans know that monsters exist but all the monsters are aware of the humans. Anyway, so he gets a new class in this um, university and he's very attracted to his new professor. His new professor is one of those humans that don't know that monsters go to this university yet. Like he's gonna find out soon, but he doesn't know that yet. Our monster warlock hero in here is very intrigued by him and realizes that this guy is married and he's also attracted to his husband. And so he kind of like propositions these two human men to be with him as well. Triggering in here, fire, death, choking, and bondage. I enjoyed this one. I gave it a three out of five stars. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all 15 books that I read in the later half of August. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a fire emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.